In this first video, we will show how to build a geometry of a wing within Star System Plus, which is integrated into the full simulation workflow of Star System Plus. This CAD can be easily adjusted to allow users to quickly test different designs. The wing can be changed in terms of pitch at various points in the wingspan, the wing length, the sweep of the wing, the height and or length scaling of each airfoil profile at various points in the wingspan, and the degree of wing dihedral or anhedral. The wing being constructed in this video is somewhat arbitrary, but we're trying to mimic something close to a 777 wing. Now before starting, I should mention that you can import geometry from other CAD packages. You can import the geometry, set up the sim, mesh it, run, and swap out geometry for other design iterations. Or instead of swapping out parts, you can directly link into that software to pass geometry directly from CAD to Star System Plus. But for the purposes of this video, we operate solely within Star System Plus, since this removes the need to swap geometry and set up the link to another package. To see how to swap out geometry, see our other tutorial in the link below. In the second video, we will cover the best practices for the proper setup, mesh, and post-processing of this wing under transonic cruise conditions. We will also cover how to change the wing design and run a new analysis. We'll start by identifying an air profile that we want to use for our wing. Here we'll use the NACA 642-415 profile. I'll start by copying the DAT file and then pasting this into a Microsoft Excel document. I'll make some changes to this. I'll delete the header and then I'll add one more column of zeros. This is so that when it's imported into Star Scene Plus, I have values for X, Y, and then values for Z are just zero. Note that obtaining a profile with a high number of grip points is crucial for obtaining a smooth airfoil, especially for the leaning edge of the airfoil. I've created this plot for values in X and Y, and you can see how here in the leading edge of the uh, airfoil, there's only a few points. But once I have a proper airfoil profile, I'd want to save this Excel file in a CSV format. Once I have this saved, I can go to Star Scene Plus, go to New Simulation, select OK. And once my simulation is open, the first thing I want to do is come up here and select the Record button for a Java macro. This will allow me to record the process that I'm about to go through. Once I stop recording, it'll save a Java file, and I can go back and replay this so that it will automate the process that I just went through. This will be especially useful if I want to swap out the airfoil profile we are using for another one. Here I'd browse to the folder I want to save this at, give it a name, and select Save. Then I'd go into Geometry, right-click 3D CAD Models, select New. I'd right-click XY Plane, and select Create Transform Sketch Plane. This will be the root of my wing, so I won't change X, Y, and Z, but I do want to translate this vector. Here I'll select Expose Parameter, and I'll give it a name. I'll set this to 1 position. In the rotation angle, I'll give it a negative 8 degrees rotation in Z, and again I'll expose the rotation angle, give it a name of 1 AOA, and then select OK. Then I'll repeat this procedure for the second transform sketch plane. I'll set this to 2, 0.1, and negative 3. For the rotation, I'll set it to 0, 0, and negative 6. Again, I'll select the translation vector. I'll expose the parameter and give it a name of 2 position, and then select OK. For rotation angle, I'll expose this and give it a name of 2, A, O, A, and select OK, and then OK again. Then I'll repeat this for the other transform sketch planes. Once that's complete, you can see a set of new design parameters below. This will allow us to go back and easily change these parameters and update the geometry. The next step is to right click each transform sketch plane and select export coordinate system. Once this is complete, I'll scroll up Right-click 3D CAD Model 1, Import, 3D Curve. I'll browse to the folder where I saved the CSV file. I'll select that CSV file and then select Open. If I keep the default as 3D Spline, I get a nice curve, but at the trailing edge, instead of getting a sharp edge like I should, it gives me a tightly curved surface. So here I'll select Import as 3D Polyline. I'll select Close the Curve, and I'll select my local coordinate system, and then select OK. Then I'll repeat this procedure for every local coordinate system. So for example, I'd right click 3D CAD, go to Import, 3D Curve, select my airfoil again, and then select my second coordinate system. Once I've imported all my curves, I want to right click each one of these curves, go to Create Extrude. Here under Body Interaction, I want to set this to None. And one quick note to make here is that this distance may need to be smaller for a smaller size wing so that it doesn't visually get in the way of other profiles. 
I'll select OK and then I'll repeat this for my other curves. Once I've created all the extrudes, as you can see here, I need to go up to my bodies listing, and for each one of these bodies, I need to scale it up in size. Go to Transform and Scale. Here I can scale this uniformly in X, Y, and Z. So I'll select this, and for the first one, I'll scale it up by factor of 13, and then I'll select the local coordinate system. After that, I'll select OK. Then I'll repeat this for bodies 2 through 10. Once the scaling is complete, as you can see down here, uh, I'll reset my view so I can get the view of all the scaling that's been done. After this, I will select the face closest to the wing tip, right click, and create sketch from face edges, and then select OK. I'll repeat this for every extrude going down the span of the wing. Once this is done, I'll see face sketch 1 through 10. I'll select face sketch 1 through 4. right click and create loft. I'll uncheck these two boxes, set the body interaction to none, and before selecting match vertices manually, I'll show why I need to uh, select this box. Here you can see the top face of this previous airfoil actually inverts and folds up under this one. So I'll select this and it'll manually match the trailing edge vertices. Once this is done, I'll select OK. Then I'll repeat this by selecting face sketch 4 through 10, create loft, and I'll use the same procedure. Then I'll select OK. Once this is done, I'll create a sketch for the semisphere, which will be used for the domain. The radius needs to be 8 to 10 body lengths away from the wings. So to get an idea as to what the wingspan is here, I'll use this ruler icon up here, and I'll measure from the root out to the tip of the wing. Here I can see it's about 30 meters, so I'll scroll up to my XY plane, right click, create a sketch. Here I'll orient my view normal to this, and then I'll use this line icon to draw a line. So I'll click once here, click again, and press escape, and I'll do it one more time, and press escape. Here I'll right click, apply a fixation constraint, I'll click the upper line, I'll put in 300, press enter, down here, type in 300, and press enter. Okay. Once that's done, I'll select this icon, then select the center, the first point, and then the second point. And to finish this off, I'll zoom in up here, I'll use the line tool again, create a line that is coaxial with this line, right click it, and set as construction. Then I'll select OK. I'll go down, right click sketch one, and create revolve. The direction should be reverse, the body interaction set to none, and here I can see I need to increase its angle, so I'll set this to 180 degrees, and then I'll select OK. Once this is done, I'll scroll up and I'll select body 11 and 13. So 13 is this outer domain and body 11 is the uh, base part of the wing. So what I'll do, I'll right click boolean and imprint and I'll select OK. So what this does is it imprints the uh, base of the wing to this uh, domain and that is needed to later subtract the wing from the semi-sphere. Next I'll go in and name some of these body faces. So I'll rename this as uh, sim for symmetry plane and I'll hide it. And I'll rename this as free stream. Hide this as well. I'll reset my view. And uh, I want to get rid of all these extrudes, so what I'll do is I'll come up in body 1 through 10. I'll select all of them and select hide. Then I want to rename the main surface of this wing, but in the default selection, I'm able to select uh, faces and curves. So to disable that, I'll come up here and deselect curves. Now I'll use the zone selection tool to draw a big lasso around this. Right click and you can see it selects everything. So then I'll right click, select rename, and type in wing and OK. After this, I'll deselect the current selection. I'll go into the wing tip. I'll right click this, rename this wing tip, and select OK. Then I'll re-enable the uh, curve selection. 
and I want to select the leading edge of this airflow. Go down here, and I'll right click on this and select rename. I'll do the same thing for the trailing edge. After this, I'll select Close 3D CAD, and I'll transfer these three bodies down to the parts level. I'll accept the default. Then under Operations, I'll select New and Subtract. This will allow us to automatically subtract the three bodies from each other so that any changes made in the future will automatically feed into this process and produce the one part that we need. So here I'll select all three parts and OK. Under Operations, Subtract, the target part will be body 13. And OK. And after this, I'll right click and select Execute. So now under the parts listing, I see that I have my three original parts and the new subtract part. I'll go ahead and create a geometry scene and I'll adjust this so we just see the new subtract part. So now when I rotate this and turn it to transparent, you can see that we have just one wing inside our domain. Now if I wanted to change my geometry, all I'd have to do is go back to the simulation tab, go down to 3D CAD Model 1, and under Design Parameters, say if I wanted to change the angle of attack for my last airfoil to 5 degrees. I put in 5, press Enter, and then if I wanted to make this go up by 2 meters, uh, I would put in 4.5. And then what I would do is right click, subtract, and execute. And what it's going to do is update all these bodies, and then it will execute the subtract, and as you can see here, our wing updates. Now if I wanted to use a different airfoil profile for my wing, what I need to do is go into Geometry, 3D CAD, delete 3D CAD 1, then delete the parts that come from 3D CAD 1, and then under Tools, in coordinate systems, I want to delete my local coordinate systems that I created earlier. After this, you create your new profile in a CSV format, and when you save it, you need to ensure the naming of that CSV file matches your JavaScript. For example, when I look at my Java file, I can see that when I saved the first profile, it was called airfoil underbar profile.csv. So when I run this Java macro, it's going to look for that file. And then I'll tell it to play that Java macro. Once it's done, if I go into 3D CAD and select Edit, you can see that I got up to the point of scaling the bodies. I still need to select the faces, create the lofts, create my domain, the imprint, and then name my surfaces and edges. Then like before, I transfer each one of these bodies down to the parts level. I would connect each of these down to my subtract, so I go to Operations, feed each one of these into my subtract node, set my target. We execute this, then get to my subtract part, and then I will want to make sure that each one of these surfaces and edges feed directly into the boundary it should be feeding into. The setup and creation of regions, boundaries, and feature curves are covered in the next video. Once a link between the part, surfaces, and curves are correctly set to the region level, you just need to clear the solution, select Mesh, and Run, as seen at the end of the next video.